Welcome everybody. My name is Maria Cristina Nendero. I'm an independent curator and I'm a curatorial director of 2022 Design Miami Fair. And I'm very happy to be here at this talk with Alexander von Wegesack, Matthias Schwarzcloud, and Misha Kahn. This, uh, this talk, it's about collecting. And of course, we started from the idea that collecting object is some sort of the core of, of uh, the fair in any marketplace that aims to be like uh, one of the most important uh, platform for design. Um, I would like to talk about uh, how Alexander von Wegesack, who's very well-known collector, started to put together um, his uh, famous collection. And uh, then I would like to talk with uh, Misha, how is the perception of a designer who produce object uh, that will end in somebody else's collection. And then from there, I would like to talk about what is about collecting experiences. And we will talk about Bois Boucher, which is the place where Alexander and Matthias Schwarzklaus uh, live and work. And uh, it is some sort of uh, special place where experience uh, within uh, design, architecture, and uh, human relations are really at best. So good morning, Alexander. Good, good morning, Matthias and Mishka. No, I, actually, it's afternoon. Alexander, I know that you have been, you are an only child, and you told me once that when you were very little, you were surrounded by all those objects. How did you start collecting, and how did you start uh, thinking about putting together a collection? I think the most inspiring thing for me had been flea markets uh, when I was 11 uh, or 12. So uh, I found a huge amount of different objects and it was a pleasure to hear all these different stories about uh, uh, sometimes the same thing, but a completely different story. So to decide, to make a difference between um, promoting the sale and the truth about the history. So uh, um, I, at that time, I, we had been refugees after the war, so we didn't have money. I could only buy very little objects no one was interested in. <laughs> yes, I remember now, you told me this. <laughs> when I fall in love with something, uh, then I tried to um, to buy it, and and sometimes uh, a couple of years later, when the objects had been a little bit growing up, um, it uh, I sometimes had to pay for several months uh, in, in order to finance uh, my objects. But, in order to cover the whole purchase, you mean? Yeah, but uh, it was very soon that I needed the objects uh, for practical use. It was uh, shares in a um, factory in Hamburg, uh, which where I started to live and to um, uh, do theater. So we needed for the public chairs. And I remember the, the flea markets so uh, I went there to get all the chairs for a very little price and uh, became curious more and more. Most of them had been bentwood furniture from Tonnet, and I became very much interested in this uh, history of uh, Michael Tonnet. Uh, which was really uh, one of the most important evolution in the industrial world uh, and uh, was very successful. And then it happened that you also work at the Tonnet, no? Tonnet Museum. Uh, yes, uh, I, uh, I went to the East European countries where uh, those main factories uh, existed and I found all the documents about it. I started to do a publication about it and ex uh, exhibition. Um, as chairs are um, accompanying us, the, the human being, 
uh, uh, as much as uh, uh, the um, um, closing. Um, closing. Uh, of course, um, you can use them very well to tell stories about our uh, culture, our uh, history. And um, uh, so chairs became quite an important part of my collection, but uh, with the orientation that uh, I was looking for um, innovation in the technique, in the material, and of course, in the fantasy uh, of the um, uh, design of the object. But Alexander, you are co-founder of the Vitro Design Museum. So I understand that when you started collecting for the permanent collection of the museum, I think that your situation was not the one that you had in Hamburg, that you had no money to go and look for chairs. So what was uh, your goal when you were buying for the museum, putting the collection together. And what were, maybe you can tell us some criteria that you follow at the time, or if it was something just like an instinctive uh, gesture. You, um, you see, it's uh, 20 years before the Vitre Zeim Museum, uh, I started collecting. So I had experience, I did exhibit. Already, yes. Uh, with the uh, Musée d'Orsay in Paris, with uh, I did the Tonnet Museum in Frankenberg, I did uh, the, the MAC in Vienna, uh, took over a part of my collection that you, everyone can see when they enter the museum. So there had been a lot of experience. And I, when I started the Vitra Design Museum, we had been able to start immediately with a program because I had the, my collection, I brought it and available, uh, yeah. And the library and the archive. So immediately when the museum was open, we could start to work. So I continued, uh, Rolf Fehlbaum uh, agreed about the principles of selection. Uh, to innovation is a leading point of technology and, and material. Uh, so um, we continued uh, in the same way to collect. I see, absolutely. Misha, so this is the other way around. No, you are a designer. You produce pieces that in the best occasion arrive in the best uh, collection. They start living inside those houses. I mean, there's some collector that keep on storage, but let's say that most of them wants to, to live with the pieces, uh, experience them every day. So what, what, is the what is your feeling about, you know, putting together a piece Then you know that the future, hopefully, will be this one? Well, I think... I don't know. I feel that's a tricky, it's hard to know where to like enter that question exactly. Um, I think what's interesting about seeing the things in these larger collections is, which sort of mirrors how I feel like I collect things in my life has so much to do with um, like an intense specificity. Uh, because obviously you're seeing all these objects and I think the the temptation is to want them to like fit in to some degree with the with that object with those objects the way that they consider materials or form. Um, and then, obviously, it's been interesting to see that the ones that have succeeded are the ones that like usually engage don't engage with that at all. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> so. And I feel like so much, so many of my objects come from kind of like amalgamating a collection of like really li like little experiences and putting, parceling these stories together into an object. Um, and I think that's been the thing that's been the most relatable for, for people to discover in them is seeing that you're sort of buying this collection of 
a story or stories that that kind of got woven together with the forms. Um, yeah. And I think the other, like, I just use such, um, I feel like what's the, what the funny translation of that for me is like uh, so many of those things are like these really banal moments just for my everyday life where something's like sp sparks, you know, there's like a dog eating a Pringle in a silly <laughs> way. And like that shape, you're like, oh, I can use that shape for this part of the chair. Um, and then that kind of recognize, vaguely recognizable thing that's so like lowbrow and banal, then like in the form can like enter this collection that feels very the opposite. Okay, I understand. But uh, so Misha, your work displays odd shapes and animatic characters, like very, you know, a lot of colors. Can we say that your pieces look like a combination of thoughts that somehow melt together or combine together coming from different direction? And, um, and uh, what, what, if this is correct, uh, what, kind of, uh, what, what, what kind of destination do you think that uh, your pieces would have? Do you think about their future destination while you are crafting them? Or you just think about yourself, that moment, it's you and your work? More the latter, but I usually imagine them in a place that I've sort of fully conjured. So I'm not picturing them like, in a house with other things like it's always like in these sort of complete environments that are m more my imagination and then you're kind of pulling this this piece out um which I th just makes it easier for to work i feel because you're not like you're not tethered to anything so you're not trying to get it to like sync up with with other objects or environments or sensibilities um Yeah, and the combination, I think so much of design has been about making like a singular thought into an object. Okay. And I, I just don't think that's, I think it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not I think right. like the, the things I'm making always feel like these amalgamations because I think our lives are very, you know, frenetic and we, you can feel so many feelings at the same time. Um, So I feel like I'm always trying to make an object that, that is doing that same thing, which is less clear to the viewer. But once you start pulling it apart, you can see all those, those elements in it. Okay. Um, you, you just mentioned that before when, when you were talking, Misha. Uh, are you a collector? I have gone through such a weird arc of, of my own. At first, when I was like really starting my studio, I would buy anything that I thought was kind of like at thrift stores and flea markets and stuff that I thought was good inspiration. And I had just like, I kept moving. And I feel like every time I moved, there would just be like boxes and boxes of like little trinkets and tchotchkes. Um, and since I feel like I've lost all of it, I was like, I don't want to have anything anymore. Um, and now I feel like I've started collecting again. <laughs> You started so, again. You started yeah, again. Yeah. Like, okay. Can you tell us something specific you recently acquired or got it? Uh, well, I it's been a pleasure now to be able to do like trades with with people whose work I really love, and then to kind of so I have a lot of things in my house that I live with, um, and I don't know. There's like there's a Wendell Castle table that. Okay. I really That's adore. Very good choice. <laughs> you can like tilt it over and then it, it's unusual for him. It's like a fiberglass. It's not a wood thing. Um, and I feel like I've learned so much from the other objects I've had of other people's, you know, like I see the things that they did really well in the objects mm -hmm. or we have a Gatana Peche dining table and it drives me crazy because the thing, it's like so cute that it's so wobbly, but <laughs> it's our only dining table so we always like feel wild about it it's the only way okay so you use it i mean you use yeah, your yeah. things every day i mean you you live with them yeah okay don't put it on a pedestal and look at them if there's the chair you sit on it if it is a table you use it okay great yeah okay yeah. so you are not obsessed about object but you feel that objects need to be used no yeah Okay. No, I mean, I think, I just think everything should get used. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's, it's just nicer. I feel like that's the, like the, the last part of the experience of the object is how it is with you when you use it. Um, so I think when you see people being too precious with the thing, it's kind of like, it never gets the life that it was supposed to have. Okay. I see. Okay. Thank you, Misha. Um, Alexander and Matthias, actually. Alexander, education and educating has always been um, a big part of your life. No, you, you preach culture, the design culture with the museum. You, you establish uh, Bois Boucher like a place to encourage new generation of designers to study, evolve, to learn, to make experiences there. So I want, would like to know what is about collecting experiences. And uh, this is a question for Matthias. Well, uh, yes. Yeah, starting with Alexander, just to confuse, and then it goes to you. Okay, but, but the experiences which um, sort of coined Alexander's connection are his experiences. And what I find, if I might turn the question a little bit around, really interesting is when Misha tells that his objects are telling stories, I immediately think of Alexander's reason for collecting, which he always says is storytelling. So to contextualize an object and to tell its story or to use the object to tell another story about a country, about a people, about a technology, about a material, etc. So I've had, and especially when seeing Misha on his sofa with his objects in the background, I see Alexander, or for instance, the, the, the exhibition which we did together with you in Torino about Alexander's connection, which was all about storytelling in this, in a total environment of the Pinacoteca, having these different rooms where uh, objects are turned or, or are used to um, illustrate all the different facets of Alexander's big story of the connection. Yeah, and also the exhibition in Turin with Alexander pieces was about, yeah, like a display of, of object, but actually a display of motion because every object is really much so close to a specific life experience that Alexander had that was very, very much interesting. Misha, you had a workshop in Bois Boucher in the summer of 2021, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, and, last summer. Yeah, what, what was it about and what did you learn? Not what did you teach, what did you learn? <laughs> um, I really you... enjoyed it. I had, uh, I've never taught before. And so it was about mold making. And I think mold, you know, like it was interesting to see. I have these four girls who are great and the things they made were like, just so much more imaginative than I guess I would have anticipated. And it's just always interesting seeing when someone starts building like where their mind will take them if they're just like sort of let go. So that was, I don't know, it was cool to see that, that um, I feel like I'm always making things and I'm like, this is unreasonable. Like this, I should, I have to like rein it in. This is getting like too far. No one's gonna wanna follow this thing. And then, like one of the students would made this like psychotic little like bug thing that would like hold your keys at the end of it. And it was just like, it was so lucid. And so it was nice to be around that energy that felt so um, free. Okay. It was a good reminder that people will like f follow you on whatever the little story is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Alex, Alex, yeah. yeah. Matthias? No, well, I think that this, what, what Misha has just said, this freedom is really very characteristic because Alexander is a completely unacademic person. Yes. <laughs> and that's also the, the way he built up his connection from the, from the flea market to the museum. And, yeah. uh, and <laughs> the freedom of, of experience and, and, and the freedom which is also illustrated in Alexander's nevertheless very scholarly connection yeah. in, in, many, in many senses, is very um, matches the spirit of Bobichet so beautifully. Yes, I'm very happy that Alexander is uh, uh, 
an academic spirit because as I grew up with them, and I'm very grateful, I, I learned that nothing is like freedom. Okay, Alexander, I want to know if you, in your life you have, all, you have um, thought that collecting was an obsession to be an obsession to, to, to get away with, or if you feel comfortable with this obsession, or it was just some strategic. Tell me how you feel with the act of collecting. Uh, the, the act began each time that I fall in love with something and I uh, wanted to include it. Uh, not uh, with a strategy to use it already for a certain project, but uh, I was sure there will be a day where I can uh, use this object. So uh, surprisingly, if I'm looking today on the collection, uh, there is quite a harmony, uh, uh, even uh, if it's ethnic things, uh, art objects or uh, furniture, uh, it's not only furniture, it's um, really um, about all objects uh, um, showing our way of everyday life. So um, uh, that was uh, uh, an experience um, and um, all uh, the subjects uh, 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 either if it was about uh, art or uh, design or economy, uh, I tried to explain by using parts of the collection to show the evolution of, of uh, technology like with Tonnet or the, um, the way how to sell those products people produced in two centuries, uh, like Tonnet and Ikea. Uh, so I had been interested in uh, the uh, story around objects. And of course, the objects uh, had been the best way to illustrate these stories. Misha, as we brought up the subject, how do you, what is your relationship with unacademic positions? With unacademic what? A position, like not being academic. Oh, I mean, I don't know if I think that there's any difference between like where you learn things or, or how, I feel like you can find an object that's, that's sort of perfect that, you could have come through like a proper training to get there, but people also seem, people get there in all sorts of ways. So I don't know. I don't think I see like much of a distinction other than like. Okay. No, because there are some designers that they follow the correct part of research before, you know, it's something very like a format. They follow the format. Yeah. You're, 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 um, your dog, <laughs> your your uh, way. It was, he's of... been so good, and I was like, "No, I knew <laughs> it." I'm just gonna. I'll grab him. And... <laughs> no, I like it. No. Um. Oh my gosh, he's like the un he's like the unacademic yeah. inspiration okay. behind everything. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like I go to so I love outsider art, and I feel like I've Ooh. I've that's been like such a huge source of inspiration and also something I've kind of collected. Um, and I think what's hard about, you know, this sort of academic version of design is everyone gets quite a similar training, you know, you learn yes. the yes. canon and you, you kind of get trained in all these similar roles, but then the output you want is essentially something different. So we keep like putting all the same input in and then expecting different output, which seems it's kind of unrealistic. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, yeah, I think all of the advantages you get with it of kind of knowing all these things other people have done and ways of working, I think come with the disadvantage of, of this kind of baggage of like, 
I think if you don't know about things, it's really easy to not accidentally cop like redo rehash them. Um, and so then you see people sort of so stuck on rethinking modernism or postmodernism or these elements when it's like, oh, just like let all of that go. Mm -hmm. so, okay. That, I, yeah, I don't know. That, that's probably not an, an answer to your question at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't, but it was uh, interesting. So it worked anyway. Uh, Misha, then you are opening a show at uh, Friedman Benda soon. No, tomorrow? Is that tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Can you, do you, like, promotional moment. Do you want to tell us something about your project? What, um, is, uh, what, what the audience will uh, visit at, uh, at Mark and Jennifer Gallery? It's a very, like, ethereal show for me, or like, that's sort of the energy of it. Um, and the show is called Style Without Substance. And I think it's a little bit of response to so many objects being so weighted down with being like about something. And then this very like soft exploration of materials. Um, and it has a very sort of like airy, candy quality to the show so okay. i feel like it i feel like it really made a summer show <laughs> <laughs> i look forward to see the picture so now matthias another promotional moment would you like to tell us what is happening in Waboucher this summer before uh, mm -hmm. finishing our pleasant conversation well right now we are having here students of fred uh -huh. um, as, a, as a closed class and actually they're using the collection, they take chairs from the collection, draw them and get inspiration for an interior design project. Um, then we are working with the Michelangelo Foundation on a workshop on with Japanese craft, wood making, woodcraft. Um, but in the summer itself, in the, in the workshops, we've got architectural project with, um, um, the, 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 you, we call them the Blues Brothers. <laughs> it's the, the, like the, the real name is? No, the, the, the Brown Book the, the Brown Brothers. Book Brothers from, from Saudi Arabia, from Dubai, actually. No, based in Emirates. Dubai. Ah, of and course, I know them, yeah. And um, they are coming with an Egyptian uh, builder, and they erect um, a pigeon tower, a traditional Arabian pigeon tower here. That is, that is really a, a, a very cool project. We are, we are having... Um, but it's made out of clay and uh -huh. it's about six meters high. Oh, wow. So okay. It will be an important signal of what we are doing here at Wabishé. Yeah. Uh, well, good luck. It seems like uh, an articulated project. When we have um, an engineering workshop, I'm very much interested in about um, renewable energy, solar energy in particular, with German engineer Schleichberger, my partner. Um, that, that is going to be a big thing. Then we, what else? There are so many. Let me get the program quickly. <laughs> Now the program, we, I guess we will find it on the website, no, yes, Matthias? Yes. You, yes. you find everything on the, uh, on the website. And uh, even with uh, uh, videos sometimes. Okay, so, with the informations and everything. But one, one, so, some people with you uh, in particular and your audience from of Design Miami might be really interested, interested is Nicole, Nicole McLachlan, for okay. instance who is um, recycling objects into clothing. Okay. And then something which might be interesting for Misha is Adam Nathaniel is going to give him a workshop this summer. Somebody who is always coming back since um, at least since seven or eight years is Bertrand Pott uh -huh. from the Netherlands, who is a really good friend. I love his work. And also, Very talented. Absolutely. Um, and next spot, his Lexpo. friend and a friend of ours as well um, is coming with a workshop. Then we have, um, I don't know where they're coming from, Soft Baroque, 
Um, Sounds yeah. Baroque, but any, everything is is on uh, on the website, correct? Yeah, you can find yeah. everything. Uh, and you, is Costas coming? <laughs> I thought he was maybe doing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, so it's a wrap. Um, I would like to thank Alexander von Begesack and Matthias Schwarzklaus. You can find them in Wabouche, Para Paradise on Earth, near Poitiers. Please do go. Misha Khan, best of luck for your opening tomorrow. Thanks for being thank with you. us. Misha yeah, Khan works, works with Friedman Benda Gallery. And this was a talk for Design Miami, collecting design, collecting experiences. And uh, thank you very much. Misha, you wanted to say something. No, no, no. I was just going to make a joke because I was like, oh, yeah, I better go finish it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for your time and energy. And it was a pleasure to talk to you.